What up, Mikey Stewart? Good friend Michael here. Sorry, we're a little late to Ford Field. 6 0 Western already in the Woo! end of the first. Roll the boat, go Broncos! <coughs> Took forever to find a parking spot. I had one in the garage, but they had every way blocked off to it. But finally, Plasma Pass got through. Kathleen got the tickets while I found a spot. She got the tickets faster than I could find a spot. So, we have the ball. Fourth down and one on the 39, starting the second quarter here. I think Western's gonna win. I'm thinking 38-20 is gonna be the final. They gotta be able to run the ball in Ohio. They have the number one defense in the MAC for run. Open up the passing game, limit the turnovers, and uh, Ohio's got a really good defensive lineman. Assam, I think is his name. They gotta block him. Can't let him get to Zach Terrell. So yeah, those are the keys to the game. <laughs> Little late keys to the game, I should say. I've been to Ford Field three times to watch Western play all three times. They beat Illinois, lost to Purdue in the Little Caesars Bowl. This is the third time tonight. So here's Ford Field. Trying the point here. And it's still good. Throw the low 23 7. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, the Bronco Marching Band is proud to be performing at the 2016 Marathon Latin Championship. Our show is entitled Latin Flight. We open with a powerful arrangement of Enchantment by the famous trumpeter Chuck Mangione. We feature trumpet soloists Dallas Keeper, Jake Clink, Ricky Meyer. And Colby Stackhouse. And now, the sound of Western, your Western Michigan University Bronco Marching Band!
ranging competition. Students submitted anonymous arrangements and winners were selected. Our next selection was arranged by one of those winners, Colby Stackhouse. This is his arrangement of Carlos Santana's Smooth. We feature soloists Ricky Lyon, Nick Kramer, Keegan Norby, Alex Enzi, and Chase Griffin.
forgot to mention, the weather in here is fantastic for Michigan in December. I do fewer me correctly. I said, in here, we're in a dome. Well, it's not shaped like a dome. It's an indoor stadium. 70 degrees, no wind, fantastic. Roll the boat! Two Western Michigan contestants just won gas uh, by kicking it through the uprights. Hey, look, there's Kathleen! She made it! <laughs> well, she easily made it. All right, let's go over halftime adjustments. Western just needs to continue doing what they're doing. They're moving it through the air really well. Continue to do that against Ohio. They're stopping Ohio run and pass. That Ohio offense is not very explosive. They haven't had much trouble with it. Except for that one where they gave up a big play and Ohio got a touchdown uh, three plays later off of it. So Western just needs to continue forcing pressure. If they get a big lead, Ohio's going to have to pass it. So force some turnovers. Put some pressure on their quarterback. Then Western can just control the ball by running it. But for now, just keep passing, passing, passing because that's how they're moving it. Through the air. And then by that time, you know, by the time they move it through the air really well, they'll be able to move it on the ground really well. The so Broncos is continuing to roll the boat like that on offense and defense. Second half coming up. Halftime stats, Western 11 first downs, Ohio is 3. 43 rushing yards, Ohio does have a good rush defense, they're showing it. Western's only giving up 18. 227 through the air though. Western sees continue doing that. 89 through the air for Ohio. 270 yards to 107 for Ohio. And Western's controlling the clock. 18 minutes, 36 seconds. Ohio's 11 24. Control the clock, continue to move off through the air, continue to stop Ohio. And Western can throw some turnovers, get to the quarterback as well. We're going to roll the boat for the MAC title, and we're going to go to the Cotton Bowl. Still no targeting call. No respect from anybody this year. Refs, NCAA, anybody. It's ridiculous. Oh, that was a bad hold. Bad snap. Good hold, bad snap, and it's good. point. That's why it's 26-20. Western has the ball moving here in the fourth. They're near midfield. Roll the boat! Come on, 15 minutes away from a MAC title! First Woo! one since 88 when I was born. Hey guys, uh, Western just got the interception. Uh, uh, Ohio just got the interception. So, Ohio's ball. Hanging off. You gotta be kidding. Come on, Rat! Call the game right! No one was there! No one! Butch. All right, Butch 
Champion field goal good. 33 yards makes it 29 23 Western, 124 to go. Stop, Ohio. Zero timeouts. Alright, here we go. I'm going to be recording the last 124 here in the game. Not in real time. Get them, Broncos. Falls out to the end zone. First and 10 at the 25. Come on! Oh my gosh. Already a big play. First and 10 at the 43. Come on, guys! Let's hear it! Come on, D!
the ball! Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to you for a awards presentation. To present tonight's awards is the American Conference Commissioner, Dr. John Steinbrecher, accompanied by Steve Schweighoffer from Foster Blue Water Oil and Craig Wagon from Marathon Petroleum, title sponsor of the Marathon Back Football Championship. First announcing tonight's marathon offensive player of the game from Western Michigan, Corey Davis. For the recap, obviously, you know Broncos, Mid-American Conference champions, first time since 1988. Robert Spillane came up with the key interception. And I don't know if you heard me, but I said that first game of the season, he caused the fumble against Northwestern that sealed the victory. Now he picks off the pass in their second-to-last game because they're going to a bowl game, but their last game of the regular season to seal a victory. So I, I don't know. Book ends the season right there for Spillane. Awesome job. Corey Davis was offensive player of the game. As you heard, Butch Hampton, special teams player, made a lot of field goals. Western led uh, at the half 23-7. to They didn't do that well on offense in the second half, although they were able to move the ball, but they were not able to punch in the end zone. And that really did remind me of the Northwestern game where they were able to move the ball down the field but ended up kicking field goals. And I thought in the end, oh my gosh, this is going to cost them. How is going to go down? They're going to score a touchdown. They're going to win by a point. But with the interception, that didn't happen. Um, Western kept the ball on the ground a lot. They went really conservative near the end to try to take a lot of time off the clock. Um, and they did have two Butch Hampton field goals in the second half. Uh, Zach Terrell had two interceptions in that half. He has three for the season now. Um, so that was a kind of a, a, a minus for, for, for the half as well. Not kind of, but it was a minus for the half. But the Western defense was able to come up with the key plays when they needed to to stop Ohio holding to a field goal and then forcing the turnover 
Um, they did give up some touchdowns uh, earlier in the second half, but they weren't able to really move the ball through the air. They, you know, they were able to a little bit, and they were able to really more grind it out on the ground, maybe for four or five yard gains a lot. But unfortunately, the turnovers hurt them and let Ohio back in the game. The defense kind of gave up some big plays as well. But in the end, the defense did come through with the big play to seal the game. So it wasn't pretty. It came down to the wire. But the Broncos came out on top, and they should be going to the Cotton Bowl if Navy ends up beating Temple in the American Athletic Conference Championship and the committee decides to wait for the Army-Navy game. That's all basic. They're basically saying at that point, Navy's going to go if they beat Army. And they're not going to say that, but that's what that means. And, and look at Western. They, they've done everything right this year. They've, they've won every game. 13-0. What's Navy done? They've lost twice on the year. They haven't done everything they needed to to get to the bowl game. And Western had adversity tonight facing them, and they were able to come out on top with the victory. So even in a close game, Western is able to prevail like they were early in the season against Northwestern. So in my opinion, you know, you go undefeated as a group of five team, that right there shows you should be in the college football playoff, especially not the playoff, but they're not going to that, unfortunately. The Cotton Bowl. I may have said playoff earlier. Sorry, it's late. <laughs> We're waiting in the car here, finishing up the video. I'm my heels but um, yeah, but Cotton Bowl is where, if I didn't say it, that's where they should be going over a Navy team that's lost twice. No disrespect to the Naval Academy. I'm not against them. I'm not against our armed forces in any way. I'm just saying Western Michigan, you know, a, a miraculous season. What? Coach P.J. Fleck and all of his players and all of his assistant coaches done and what we've all done as fans to support the team and, and row the boat, we deserve to go to the Cotton Bowl over a Navy team who's lost twice. Yeah, they may have more quality wins, but they haven't done everything they need to. They haven't. Those two losses, that should put them out of the conversation immediately. So that will wrap up the video. Thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing. Drop a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed it. A big, big thumbs up for Western Michigan victory. Um, so, yes. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my channel for more content. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Those links are in the description below. Till next time, this is Michael and Kathleen. She has no voice either, by the way. Over and out. Peace. Go Broncos. Roll the boat. See you later. What's up?